Forever is a long time, and that's how long we'll love you, Lord. I, I'm so excited and glad to be back. And I, I, first off, I need to just thank our uh, family ministry and youth department for the awesome job they did on last week. Give it up for them on last week. Uh, they they just knocked it right on out the park there. And, and I just want to uh, say hats off to Minister Womble as he dropped some nuggets down. I, I hope y'all were picking up what he was laying down uh, as he had I think it was what the uh, leaders of the new school, right? Leaders of the new school, and and and, and that bottom line that he dropped on us was, was awesome. He said that uh, on last week, he says godly leaders know the way, go the way, and and I'm gonna say and must show the way. Uh, yes, indeed, and and so that's an awesome thing. We closed out last month uh, as we were moving forward and we moved from hurting to to healing and uh, and 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 then he moved us from old leaders to new leaders and and so today we start a brand new series and uh, we're going to focus all month long on couples now before you tune me out hear me out uh, I, I know I, I can I can already feel the tension I, I know I'm gonna probably get some pushback on a lot of this but <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how critical it is for our uh, studying this right here. I was doing some research, and I, I, I know some of you are going to fact check me, and I want you to go out there and do that, uh, but it says now in America, less than 50% of people are in a committed relationship. Less than 50%. Whereas in 1950, that's what, 60 years ago? 70 years? What? 50 years ago? 60, 70, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, yeah, 70 years ago, yeah, I had to do my math, carry the one to make the two, yeah, 70 years ago, 78% uh, of people were in a committed relationship. You see what's happening? It, it, it's going down. And, and, and then on top of that now, it says, though, of those who are not in a relationship, 85% of them wish they were. So, so, so even those who aren't in relationships wish that they were in a committed relationship. Now, that's just the normal course of time. And then on last year, COVID showed up and showed out. In fact, it created more uh, conflict uh, in marriages and exasperated existing problems. Created new conflict and exasperated existing problems. What am I talking about? If you had poor communication and bad habits, they were intensified. Uh, if, if your romance was in trouble, uh, it was magnified. And, and if your finance was jacked up, it was amplified. And, and, and so we need this and because we all know someone who's in a relationship. And, and, and so this month, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, relationships, and today we're going to focus on uh, God's design for marriage. And, and on next week, I'm going to go ahead and give you the topic so, so you can get ready. On next week, we're going to talk about three's company, not a crowd. Uh, I'm going to show you that you need three people in your bed. You need three people in your finance. You need three people in your romance. Uh, we're going to check it all out next next week, next week. Uh, yeah, I know. You, I know you don't want to miss that one. I know. I see you already. Put that in the chat. It, yeah, the pastor said. That's right. And, and then on, on top of that, uh, then I, I, I hear a lot, especially from my younger people, uh, and this is why some of them aren't in relationships. They want to be power couples. Y'all hear that? Uh, I need to find my mate so I can be a power couple. Woo, 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 woo. All right? So we're going to spend a couple of weeks on power couples. I'm, I'm going to show you, if you want to be a power couple, I'm going to show you how to be a power couple. All right? So that's the lineup uh, for, for the month of February. All right? And, and, and so, uh, but today we're going to start, uh, if you would, take out your devices, and uh, for those of you who have them, and I want you to go to Genesis. Uh, this, 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 uh, yeah, find Genesis. And while you're finding that, uh, I know this has already been lifted up, but I, I got to lift it up again. Uh, couples, uh, we're going to have an in-person service uh, that's married or engaged or, or talking about it, as long as you consider yourself a couple. Uh, and, and that's, yeah, and, and I need to clarify that. That's a heterosexual couple. I know I'm going to get some pushback, but that's, that's all that's allowed. Uh, you're going to and, and there's seven spots left. The seven, uh, seven couples are left. So go ahead on out. Uh, you should be able to find it on the app there. You should, I think it might be on the home page there. And uh, uh, just, just hit that. And you should be able to go right up under uh, 
the uh, right there up under you, new here, you should see save the data. So you can just tap right on that and uh, sign on up. There's only seven spots left. Now, what did I say, Genesis? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, all right. Now, Genesis, the second chapter, and I wanna come from the NIV, and I wanna start at uh, verse number uh, 22. So uh, again, keep your app out and just tap, tap down there and hit worship and then uh, go to sermon notes and then you can hit uh, today's date, February the 7th, and you can see the lesson text right there. And there we find these words. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to him. The man says, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Uh, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united uh, to his wife, and they become one flesh. The man Adam and his wife were naked, and they felt no shame. Now, 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 now. To, to, to really appreciate this text, uh, we, we, I want you to understand that the book of Genesis, uh, it should, it's the easiest book in the Bible to find. Uh, it's the first book. Uh, but the book of Genesis is the title, just what it means. It's the book of beginnings. But if you want to know how the world really is supposed to be, all you need to read is two chapters of the Bible. You don't need to, if you just want to know, because you know a lot of folks say, well, why is the world this way and why is the world that way? If you wanted to know what God intended and how God really wanted things to be and how we should be living right now, you find it in the first two chapters. First two chapters. And in those first two chapters, you see where he made the universe, all the stars, the moons, and all the planets, and then where he formed the earth, and, and then where he made the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and, and then where he, he made uh, his crown jewel, humanity. Now, I got to pause. I got to pause. You know, when I start a new series, I'm, I know I'm going to be a little long today, but I, I got to have some foundation here. Got it. And I'm excited, so let me, I gotta, let me just... I am, y'all. I, I really am. But, but here's the first thing, here's the first. I'm, I'm gonna drop some things down, and I won't push back I, because the culture is trying to push us in a wrong direction. And, and with that being said, please get in a growth group, you know, because you, you can go, you can learn anywhere, all the time, anytime, and it's to teach you what is right, what is not right, how to get right, and how to stay right. And I'm getting ready to show you right now uh, how, how important this is. Now, I just told you what those first two chapters shared with us. In fact, the very first sentence in Hebrew is only seven words. It's ten in the English, I believe. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right. Now, now, now. So I got to have a little pushback here because uh, we have this evolutionary hypothesis uh, that is pushing up against the Bible. And, and notice now, I said it's a hypothesis. A hypothesis is something that has not been proven yet. Are y'all with me here? But, but this is what they teach. So, so, so when you hear people talk about proven science, a hypothesis is not proven science. It is just that, all right? And, and guess what? They couldn't even replicate the environment in which they say uh, that uh, evolution took place. All right, so, so that you got to understand that because as I'm teaching this right here today uh, about uh, God's design for marriage, we see that he is the author of it, and we go with that very first verse. It says, God created. All right, now, 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 walk with me here. So now keep your Bibles open. Now I need you to turn uh, to Genesis, the second chapter, a little background here to help us out. And I need us to look at verses 18 through 21. And, and, and I'm going to look at that right here. And, and let's pull that up. You should be able to go on your devices and see that right there. And, and let me have that right there. Look what it says. The Lord God said, it is not good, all right, for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Look at verse 19. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the name man called each living creature, this was his name, its name. 
So the man gave uh, names to all the livestock, listen to this, the birds in the sky and all the wild animals, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and he was sleeping and took out of the man's, uh, took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with his flesh. Now, now, can I just teach just a little bit? Just teach just a little bit. Look at that verse number 18. Look at verse 18 again. It said now, look at verse 18. Let's see, can we put it back up there? The Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Now, now y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. He says it's not good. Do you know up until this point, everything he had done was good? After the first day, he said, it is good. After the second day, he said, it is good. After the third day, he says, it is good. After the fourth day, he says, it is good. After the fifth day, he says, it is good. But here we are now, day number six. He's made everything. But his crown jewel, he says, it is not good for the man to be alone. Now, 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 no, notice what he says next. I will make a helper suitable for him. Let, let's, now, I got to break this down because, you know, we got all this, uh, 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 what we call it, male chauvinism and, and, and we don't have equal rights for everyone and all of that. So let me just break it down here uh, so we can, so let me slow down, let me slow down. I tell you, I'm excited. All right, that word helper sometimes is used to beat up on women, all right? You're supposed to be helping me. You're supposed to be helping me. You might help me. You, like, like you're lower, like you the help. Y'all seen the, y'all seen the movie, like you the help. You're supposed to do my dirty work. You my help. Now watch this. Don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this, all right? Then he says suitable. I draw a line up under that, circle it, highlight it, bold it, whatever you need to do. The word suitable for him. Now, now notice, God and the animals, that's all we got. And the man. Are y'all walking with me here? So watch this. God is his superior helper. Hmm? And that word helper, we often talk about the Lord is my helper, right? This is the same word, all right? Someone who can come alongside you, but this one, this helper here is a superior helper. Are y'all walking with me? And, and then God gave him dominion over the animals, not over the female, over the animals. Ah, come on. Can, can, I, can I talk to somebody here? Huh? Notice now, notice. And for those, those were his subordinate helpers. All right, we got superior helper and subordinate helper, but we don't have a suitable helper. Hi! I, come on, come on now, come on. Are, are y'all walking with me? All right, all right. I, see, see I, I'm, can I tell y'all while I'm excited? I know y'all can't see on the screen, but my suitable helper's in the house. Now drop down to verse 21. So now it says, so the Lord God caused the man to go into a deep sleep, going into God's operating room. First anesthesia, huh? Divine, right? The great physician put the man into a deep sleep, deep, almost dead, knocked him out. Now while he was in this deep sleep, he said he took out one of the man's ribs. I got to pause right here, because we, we got into English, we got it all messed up, we got it all messed up. It, that word rib actually means the side. It, it, it doesn't actually necessarily mean the bone itself. It says he opened up the side of the man, all right, and took some stuff out. I don't know what all he took out, but he took out some stuff. Then it said he closed up the place of the flesh. Now, now how, how good is God's surgery? Adam didn't even know he'd been touched. He didn't know he was missing anything, huh? Now, 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 now can, can I just talk plain here? I, I, I got to talk plain. A couple of things we can talk about right here. I told y'all I'm excited. If I don't get finished to 12, y'all going to be all right. Okay, all right. Now, two things we need, I need to say right here. First, we know that Adam was not an androgynous creature. What do I mean by that? He wasn't a compound creature. He wasn't a male and a female on the inside. He was not confused about his gender. Uh, 
are y'all walking with me here? That's the second thing. All right. The second thing is, I used to say this, and, and, and the, Lord, the Lord slapped me last night. And I'm serious. This is something I learned, Herb Redrick learned last night. I used to say folks were gender confused. But they're not confused. In fact, if they look in the mirror, they know who they are. They're gender denial. All right? So, so but here, Adam didn't have those problems. I know I'm going to get some pushback, but good, push with me, push with me. Can I keep, can I keep, keep preaching? All right, all right. So, so, so we got to understand it. So God closed up his rib, uh, up, I mean, up his side, uh, with his flesh. Are y'all with me that far? Now, now, uh, now we can get to the text. That's what it says then. Then, th this is where we're now. We're at verse 22 now. It says, then the Lord God, are y'all with me here? And I, I just got to, I got to, let me go back. The word Lord God, let me, let, you, let me just stay there just a moment. Uh, the word God uh, is not his name. That's his title. It, it means that he is, he is not mortal. It means he is above humanity. It means that he is, uh, has power that we don't possess. But the word Lord is his name. Like my name is Herb, that's his name. And it means his, but his name has meaning about who he is. His name means I am that I am. That means whatever I need to be for you, I can be for you. If you need me to be your provider, I am. If you need me to be your healer, I am. If you need me to be your peacemaker, I am. If you need me to be your righteousness, I am. I told you I could stay here, because I mean, yeah, these are the first couple of chapters here. It's, it, are y'all walking with me here? All right, all right. Man, oh, man, I, I ain't got but an hour to go. Mm. Now, 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 let's go on down there. Look what he said. He made. Now, this word made, it's not the same word as created, because the word created meaning he made things out of nothing. All right? But this word here means he made something out of something for something. All right? He made something out of something for something. That's what that means, all right? And he made, look, he made a woman, all right, from the side, all right, of the man that he had taken out of the man. Now, 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 can you just imagine? Can you just imagine? And look what this next text says. And he brought her to him. Can you just imagine? Now, watch this. Adam is asleep. Adam knocked out. All right? Adam, God went and, wake up, Adam. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Adam wakes up. Adam wakes up. He said, what, 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 Adam, go over there and sit right there. Sit right there. So he had Adam sit down right here, right? And then, can you just imagine? Because they're in the garden now. Check this out now. Then, see, y'all got to read the Bible like I see the Bible. Can't you imagine now? God. Can't you see God just bringing the woman to him? Can, can, can you just, huh? Can, can, can you just imagine? And when Adam got there, now they standing at the altar. Now, 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 now watch this now. Now they standing at the altar. All right. They're standing at the altar. There, there, there's a man and a woman. Now check this out. This is the first time they seen each other. Ah, can you imagine the Google eyes? Can you imagine what they? He looking at her. She looking at him. They looking at one another. Adam looking at her. She looking at him. They looking at one another. Can can, can you just imagine now? And and, and and then watch this now. Look what the text says next. Check this out. This was what the text says next. It says the man said. Ed. Come on, come on. Look what the text says now. Come on, come on. Look what the text says now. Hey, hey, watch this now. Yes, indeed. This is what the text says. Hey. to us now. Come on, Adam. Tell us about it.
that's wrapped up in clover. Look what he says next now. Look what he says next. That's the first night he saw that girl. The first night he saw her. Hey! I found a dream that I could speak to. A dream that I could call my own. I found a dream to press my think I need to say anything else. I, I think I can just give the benediction uh, right there. Because notice now, notice, notice what the text says. says. This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. All of that that you just said, uh, all that, as a young folks, all that, all of that. Is, is that not potent right there? See, so the next time you listen to that song, you will listen to it totally different there because this is what she was saying. She said, look, I found that, that thing that's not like anything else. Notice what he said at last. That's exactly what those words mean in the, in the Hebrew where it says, the man says, this is my, this, this is now. It, he's saying at last. What he's saying, not that the, about the woman, but it's the timing. He says, you know what, all day long, I've been naming animals. And it says, if you go back and read verses 18 through 21, it says he found no one that was like him. He, there, there wasn't anything that was made like him. Notice then, that's why it says, this is now bone of my bones. There's an S on that, all right? It's saying it's got the same kind of molecular structure that I have, all right? Same kind of strength that I got, all right? But then it's got the same kind of flesh. It ain't hairy. It ain't porcupine. -y. Yeah, it, it, it. Can, can I just talk plain? Whatever beauty any woman got, they got it from her. And brothers, whatever we got, we got it from him. We didn't get it from any monkeys. Now that might be your in-law side of the family. <laughs> But my side, <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, all right, all right, come on, come on. I told y'all, it's just good stuff. I ain't even got to my first point yet. I, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to finish this today. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish this today. I might have to continue this next week. Bones are my bones. Flesh of my flesh. All right? She shall be called woe man. I'm going to stay right there for just a moment. That word means womb man. W-O-M-B dash M-A-N. And we bump it together and we get the word woe man. It means a man with a womb. Woe man. I just told you now, right? All right? Why? For she was taken out of man. So that which she is, he is, except for she has what he doesn't have. Can I say it this way? Same substance, different stuff. 
Y'all, y'all, y'all got that? Y'all, 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 y'all some young folks, because I know we got some young folks, that, but y'all know what I'm talking about, right? When they were looking at each other, same substance, different stuff. That's what that's saying right there. I told you I could stay here all day. That's good. I don't know about for you, that's good for me. All right? So let me drop your first focal point on you here. All right? What the man lacked, the woman supplied. And what she lacked, he supplied. All right? Now, now, now. That's your foundation for the rest of the month. All right? That's it right there. Now walk with me through these last few verses. This one right here is going to help some households. It says, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife and they become one flesh. Now, let me just, let me just walk right here. The first thing we're going to talk about is this leaving. Two things. One, it does not mean abandonment. All right? It does not mean, because I'm talking on, on mess with my women, all right? He won't leave his family alone. He's not to abandon them. Well, the Bible says he's supposed to leave. It means change priorities. Okay? When he was mother and father, when they were, were children and they were unmarried, okay? And they, they didn't have anybody else. Mom and dad is still their priority. But once you find your woe man for us men and for your women, your man, you leave, you change priorities in your household. All right? Now your household becomes priority. And it also becomes permanent. Those are the two things. Priority and permanent. Now, mamas, let me turn and talk to you. All right? How, I, I, I'm going to make this as clean and plain as I can. Mamas, when your sons get married, you need to stop breastfeeding them and cut the cord. Is that good? All right, all right. That's PG? Okay, all right, good, okay. All right, y'all know what I want to say, but that's, okay. All right, so that's leaving. Then the next thing, it says united, all right? That, that no, yeah, it says united. Uh, that, that's leaving, uh, that's uh, cleaving, uh, that, that's putting it together like glue. How many of you ever got some super glue on something that you didn't want it on? It's stuck anyway, right? All right, so if you marry something you weren't supposed to marry, you stuck anyway, all right? But God made a way out. God made a way out. God made a way out. That's a whole nother story. But, but that word means to come together, all right, to the point that you, wherever one goes, the other goes. Whether they're physically there, they're spiritually and morally and mentally there. Oh, brothers, y'all didn't catch that. All right? If you're stuck with that person, right, wherever you go, they're going with you. So if you go hop in someone else's bed, they're there. All right, I'm trying to help some. I told you how bad relationships are. All right, it's because they're messed up. We're not following God's design. Are y'all with me? So that's leaving. That's what I said, the cleaving. Now the next one is weaving. It says united. And they become one flesh. Now what is he saying? That's how they started. She was in there. God pulled her out of there, but that flesh she took was the flesh of the man. So what she had is what the man had. So that was him standing there looking at himself. He was looking at himself as a woman. Are y'all looking at this? See, this will clean up a whole lot of stuff in households if we would just start right here. Okay? Uh, man, man, man. God didn't take her out of your feet for you to step on her. Women, ladies, he didn't take it out, you out of his head so you, you could think he needs to put you up on a pedestal. 
He took you out of our sides so you could be my peer, equal to same substance, different stuff. Are y'all walking with me here? All right, so let me, let me drop the next little nugget. I got to move along. A marriage is a signed, sealed, and delivered covenant. That's what that leaving, weaving, and cleaving is about. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I can teach that. I'm, there's a whole lot of, I, I, but, but time just won't permit. So, so let's walk on. Let's, let's go on to the third. What's that? It says, Adam and his wife were both naked and felt no shame. Notice who was naked now. Both, both, totally exposed. Now, now, now I'm, 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 can I just teach here just a little bit too? This nakedness means more than physical nakedness. All right? Meaning they didn't have no secrets. I'm amazed at brother. Why she need a password to my phone? Because it's her phone. I know I'm messing some folks up. They about, yeah, go ahead and change the channel, but the truth's still the truth. <laughs> if you're naked in front of her, shouldn't be anything in there that she can't see. What about your computers? What, what, what kind of sites you going out to? If you're looking at naked women, then you're fornicating. You're committing adultery. Because it's happening in your mind. And the Bible says, so what you think. All right, you're going to be judged on that too. Notice it said, and they felt no shame. Ooh, you're talking about a household that's balanced and feeling good. Well, you, you can be naked. You got nothing to hide. You, you, you can lay your keys down, your phone down, your tablet down. You, 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 can, you don't worry about when the phone rings, who's answering. You're not trying to beat somebody to the mailbox before the mail gets there. Uh, what's in that Amazon box, huh? Nothing what you want to know for, because I want to know. I told you now, COVID has exposed some problems and it's created some new ones. I said that right at the beginning. That's where I started. That's where I started. But watch this now. Let me give you a third focal point. I, I, when couples look at each other, listen to this now, through God's eyes, there is no shame. All right? There is no shame. Now, now, I, I, I could I could hear the folks out there say, "Well, I ain't in no relationship, and, and I, I, you know, I don't want nobody." Yes, you do. I already told you, eighty-five percent of the folks do. The other fifteen percent lying about it. Uh, 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 why? Because this is how God made us. He says it's not good for us to be alone. Now, now, I, I'm a, we're gonna have a whole series on being single. Single doesn't mean you're half a person. Let me just go ahead and clear that up. Because Jesus said, and Paul says, I wish some of y'all could be like I am. You can do more for the kingdom. And let me just go ahead and drop some other nuggets. And when you get to heaven, don't worry about who you were married to, because I ain't going to be your wife when you get there anyway. All right? Some of y'all worried about, well, which wife is going to be my wife when I get to heaven? None. That ought to, that ought to free some brothers up. Shoo, <laughs> boy, some ladies too. Hey, whoa, because I ain't know if I'm going to have to deal with that again. <laughs> Woo, glad that one's done. Yeah, woo. <laughs> Let me get out of here, y'all. Let me get out of here. I, I pray y'all, look, tell your friends, please, come out the rest of the This is just the beginning, all right? This is just the beginning. Uh, but we want to be forward-focused couples, all right? Because I want all of you to be able to say, at last. Give me a little bit more of that, Stephanie, at last. I, I want all of you to be able to to say that, that, that when you look at that person, you can feel like Adam felt about e, uh, the woman and the woman felt about Adam, that they looked at each other. 
they didn't have any clothes on. They didn't have any things hidden in their mind. Over in the bush over there, they didn't have a tablet somewhere, that, their, their extra tablet, their extra phone. Uh, that, you know, some of them, if you got enough money, you got your extra place. You know, you've you seen the folks that got all this money. They got a house in, in New York and one in Florida and, and one out in California. They got families in all of them. No, 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 no. When, when, when you're in this kind of relationship, and you can get there, even though we've messed it up, we can get back to the garden. And that's what we're going to be talking about all month long. We're going to start next week. Three's company, not a crowd. You got to you, please be here. But until then, I want to challenge you to take inventory on your relationship and go back and look at those focal points again and ask yourself, is he supplying what I need and am I supplying what he needs? And is my marriage a signed, sealed, and delivered covenant? And when we look at each other, do I look at them through God's eyes with no shame? Do I not hold their past against them when they've asked me to forgive them? Have I done those things? And if you do, then I can give you these few points right here, then I'll be out of your way. I'm going to give you four key points for godly uh, marriages. Thank you, Stephanie. Listen to the first one here. Here's the first one. God intended the man or the husband and wife, to, here's, here, this is this part right here, to be phys a physically, spiritually, and functioning unit. That's the first one, self-explanatory. The second one, God intended for the husband and wife to walk in integrity before him. That's why they were naked. They, they weren't only naked to each other, they were naked and unashamed before God. Because in the next chapter, they're going to blow all that up. But right now, they were naked and unashamed before each other and before God. All right? And then the third one. Here's the one I don't want you to miss. God will prosper your relationship when it operates in harmony with him and each other. When you and your spouse or you and your mate can get on the same page with God first. Oh, you're talking about marriage of bliss. You ain't seen nothing yet. Ah. And then the fourth one here. God desires, listen to this. God desires to meet all your needs for godly, suitable companionship. Watch this. When God has a voice, you're going to make a good choice. Listen to what I just said. When God has his voice, you're going to make a good choice. So here's your bottom line. Here's what I don't want you to forget. Marriage is God's design, idea, and design, not ours. We couldn't do it like he can do it. But if you do it his way, you can say at last. God bless you. See you on next week.